Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how a very simple pattern can convert an image into stars. Just like that, that's a regular live pattern layer. So we'll take a look at exactly how that works, how to get the right look out of it, along with some more in-depth applications, including how to get multiple colors and even other patterns using the same principles that we will get into now. Let's get into Photoshop and get started. All right, so first of all, what is this pattern? Let's take a look at this thing. This is a full size single tile of the pattern. You can see obviously it's this star shape and it's laid out to repeat seamlessly. But what's important here is that it's not just a black star on a white background, it's actually a series of concentric stars starting with a tiny black one and then each one getting slightly lighter and lighter all the way to white. This shape I actually created in Illustrator using blend shapes. So in Illustrator, I had a tiny black star, a big white star, objects, blend, make, and then adjusting the blend to be one of these smooth options. So we end up with these concentric stars. And if I were to put a threshold adjustment on top of this pattern, and that clips things to black and white, depending on where you set the threshold, that'll give us a nice defined star shape. And sliding the threshold up and down basically creates a larger or smaller star, right? Similarly, if I put a solid fill color in here and I set this solid layer to hard mix blending mode, you may have seen any number of videos I've done on the channel here where this hard mix blending mode acts just like a threshold adjustment and changing how light or dark this solid is functions just like that slider on the threshold adjustment. And the nice thing about using this blending mode is that it doesn't care which layer is on top. So if I switch the solid back to normal blending mode and I put the pattern on top instead, and I set the pattern layer to hard mix, we get the exact same effect. And still making the solid color layer lighter or darker will have that same effect of making the stars larger or smaller. All right, then here's what's really cool. This layer underneath doesn't have to be just a solid color because on this picture of the king, what I can do is put this pattern on top of the image. I'll scale it down to maybe 50%. And then I'm gonna set the pattern layer to hard mix blending mode. And it's the exact same principle at work here. These layers are combining to create sort of a threshold, but instead of a solid gray, it's the light and dark values of the image that are effectively changing the size of the stars. And one extra benefit of using hard mix is that while with a threshold adjustment, you're stuck with this aliasing from clipping things to pure black or white, with hard mix, you can dial down the fill value just a little bit, even just down to 97%. And that does help just to round off those sharp artifacts. All right, so that's how it works. But I should say there are some things about this particular image that are giving us a nice clean result. So just a couple of notes. First of all, it's hard to compete with the king but let's give it a shot with the boss. I've got this image. I'm gonna put the pattern layer on top, bring the scale to 50%, set the blending mode of this layer to hard mix and the fill to 97%. Those are all the same values, right? But this just does not look right at all. So a couple of things here. First, for this to work right, the image does need to be black and white. So I'm actually gonna make this a smart object and just keep any changes I make to it live. Then I'm gonna use Command Control U to adjust the hue and saturation and just bring the saturation all the way down. All right, also this image, the size of this image itself is way too small. It's like 800 and something pixels wide. With this technique, it really is the bigger, the better. So I'm gonna scale the image up to about 4,000 pixels wide. And that automatically scales the pattern up as well. So I need to bring that back down to 50%. Next up, if you want a little bit cleaner star shapes, it actually helps to have a blurry image. So I'm gonna use Gaussian blur on this image and I'll just eyeball it, but I'm gonna bring it up to 10 or maybe even 15. I don't really mind that that makes the image a little bit less defined. I think that's kind of part of the aesthetic and it does clean up the shapes of those individual stars. All right, then there's something going on with the values up here where this muddy black is kind of breaking out of the pattern. That's actually a side effect of using this fill value anywhere below 100%. And it, it only happens where the values in this image are either completely black or really, really close. So all I need to do is just lift up the black values in this image a little bit. I'm gonna use Command or Control L for a levels adjustment. 
and I just need to bring the black output level up just a tiny bit. It's kind of interesting the way this math works out. If the fill value you're using is 97%, you need to lift the blacks up about 3%. If the fill value was down at 90% because you wanted really nice soft edges on the stars, you'd have to bring the black values up about 10%. So it's this trade-off between how much dynamic range you want in the image and how much you wanna smooth out the edges of the stars. And of course, I can also use this levels adjustment to change the overall values of the image Using curves instead of levels would allow you to get into more detail, but for something like this where I'm just looking for big blunt changes, I personally like the simplicity of a levels adjustment. Either way, it's kind of cool how changing the value of the image gets translated into changing the sizes of those stars. All right, but there we have it. That's how the image looks now, and with the stars pattern applied. Next up, let's take a look at a really cool way to get multiple colors happening in here. So first off, I'll point out that I'll share with you guys two versions of this star pattern, and the second one is just an inverted and slightly offset version of the first pattern. So the first one will make black stars out of the dark values, and the second one will make white stars out of the bright values. So let's use the original pattern and let's change this into being purple stars with a transparent background. And I would do that like this. First, I'm gonna take the pattern layer and Alt or Option click in between these two layers to create a clipping mask. So it only applies to this layer and it's kind of paired with this layer. Then I'm gonna double click on the image layer and use Blend If. Holding Alt or Option, I'm gonna drag the white slider for this layer all the way to the bottom, making the whites transparent. Then I'm gonna group these two layers with Command or Control G, and I'll call this group Dark Stars. And on the group, I'm gonna apply a color overlay effect and choose a color for the stars. So that gives us purple stars, transparent background. Let's put a solid color layer in here for a background. And then I'm gonna do a separate set of stars made from the brighter values. So First, I'll duplicate this entire group with Command or Control J, and I'll call this one Light Stars. Then I'm gonna turn the dark one off for now and we'll just focus on this. So first, I'm just gonna trash this color overlay effect to kind of start over, and I'm gonna right click and clear the layer style that clears that blend if setting. So on this one, I'm just gonna switch that pattern to the inverted stars pattern. Then this time we'll make the black transparent by double clicking on the image layer using blend if again, but this time alt or option dragging the black slider all the way to the top. All right, then I could apply color overlay on the group folder again if we wanted to fill these stars with a color, but this time let's fill them with a texture. So how about some sparkly gold for the king? I'm gonna drag that in here and scale it to fill the image. Then all I need to do is make sure this texture is sitting outside of the group folder, right above this group folder. I'm gonna Alt or Option click in between the texture and the group folder to create a clipping mask. And then we get the stars filled in with this texture. Then I'm gonna turn the dark stars back on. And that is a pritty crazy halftone effect or tritone effect, whatever you wanna call it. And the way these patterns are built, the dark stars and the light stars are kinda of offset from each other. So they kinda of fit together like a puzzle. Maybe we can drop a little bit of texture on top of everything. Just give it kind of a weathered treatment. I'm gonna set this texture to screen mode. And this is a texture that I created, and along with thousands of other textures, it's free at texturelabs.org. I'll post the star patterns as well. Occasionally, however, I do post things that are just for Patreon supporters. And for those wonderful people who have supported the Texture Labs project, I've got a bunch of extra halftone patterns. So triangle halftones, hexagons, and then some really cool complex geometric patterns. And these function in exactly the same way as the stars. It can be really interesting to mix different halftone patterns together. I think there are some really cool possibilities here for apparel design or print design. So I hope these will be useful for my friends on Patreon. If you do wanna make your own patterns, there's kind of two routes. One is like I did with that star to use blend shapes in Illustrator. So that could be something simple like a triangle where you've got a big black triangle, a small white triangle, object, blend, make, 
then it's a matter of laying these triangles out into a pattern. And it's the same approach even if you're doing a set of complex interlocking shapes, like this one has stars and diamonds and hexagons, and it was fun to create, but it also kind of took forever. But when it's applied as a halftone, it does look really cool. Okay, the other option for creating these patterns is just to experiment with some various little repeating gradient things in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, I could make a new document. It could be really small, like 100 by 100 pixels. And if I drop in a gradient layer and just try one of these default presets, like the angle gradients, who knows what that gradient would be used for in general. But if I just say edit define pattern here, then let's take a look at how that pattern works as a halftone pattern. That's kind of cool right there. All right, well, that wraps it up. I will link to this stuff below. I hope you guys enjoy experimenting with this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.